Praise the Lord. Welcome back for the final part and Happy New Year. <laughs> I pray that you have a wonderful first day of 2021. I'm honored that you made this devotion part of your day and what an excellent way to start the new year. Maybe you made some New Year's resolutions today and I pray that one of those was to grow closer to God and I also hope that this devotion helps you to do just that. Dan, judge spoken over him by both his mother and his father. God revealed to him that this was his purpose through the voices of these two people. Today, I want to leave you with this truth. Others may point us toward our purpose, but only we can fully realize and see the fulfillment of that purpose. No one can make it happen only between you and God. A lot of the prophecies and promises spoken to us and over us are going to come to pass if we move in the direction of their fulfillment. A lot of the promises of God that we find in our life and in the Word are called if-then promises, similar to what we see in 2 Chronicles 7:14, where he said, If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will heal their land. In other words, move your feet. Maybe you know a piece of the call and the purpose on your life. Maybe you have felt God say something to you or someone has spoken something into your life. That's wonderful. I'm so glad that you have had a moment like that. We need those times when someone sees the potential inside of us and calls it out. However, we also need to do something. Paul told Timothy in 1 Timothy 4, Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. That's an action. Set an example. That was calling Timothy out to be something, to do something, not just to walk around knowing he was called, but to challenge himself to take care of those five areas in conduct, in speech, in love, in faith, in purity. The next verse says, until I come, devote yourself, devote yourself to the public reading of scripture, to preaching and to teaching. Again, devotion is an action. Again, it was actions that were outward actions this time. This time it was doing something publicly. The first few were doing something privately even, but this one was not inner work as much as it was outer work. But Timothy had to do both. And the last verse that I wanna read is verse 14. He continues on and says, "'Do not neglect your gift, "'which was given you through prophecy "'when the body of elders laid their hands on you.'" In other words, Having the prophecy is not enough. You are responsible to prioritize that calling and not neglect it. May we have the attitude of Caleb, who even though he was 85 years old and the promise that he had been given was 45 years old, he believed that he had more to accomplish. He had received a promise from God at a, as a much younger and much stronger man. But he refused to rest until he had seen that promise fulfilled. At the age of 85, he famously declared, Give me the mountain that God promised me. If God has promised you a mountain, don't settle for a rest home. Do not stop until you fulfill the purpose for which you were called. The purpose of this lesson series this week has been twofold. The first, to convince you and assure you, you have purpose. This is not built on, your purpose is not built on your own parents, your family, your upbringing, or your past. It is built on a God-given purpose and potential that God himself placed inside of you and picked for you when he formed you. The second purpose of this series this week was to remind you that just because the purpose is there does not mean you can sit back and do nothing. 
We cannot neglect the call, as Paul said, but that means the purpose or the potential inside of us. That call requires action on our part. Our actions can be unseen for some time. Through prayer, we allow God to heal old wounds and traumas inside of our own bodies, minds, and spirits. Through studying the word, we heal from unhealthy thought process and paradigms. Through God's love, we change and adjust our attitude, our behavior, and our words to be full of his love. That process can be a very long one, even years. And in all honesty, it never truly ends. There's always something to change at the foot of the cross and in the presence of God. But that process is worth it. Because every time you have a victory, whether it's a personal victory, whether it's a public victory, maybe it's something nobody else knows of but you and God, but it's something you always struggled with and you have a victory over it because you let him work on you. You and God are going to have a rejoicing dance party together. You are fulfilling the purpose that he has placed on your life. I hope you take the time to go through that process. Start today. Why not start today? It's a brand new year. You know the saying, new year, new me. Let's do it. But let's say, let's say new year, I'm going to be like Jesus. I'm not going to recreate myself or turn myself into something because I think it looks good. I'm going to make it so that I become more like Jesus. I'm going to put the work into it. Because when you have that moment of victory, this is what you should hear Jesus Christ say. And this is what you will hear him say. See, I told you who you are. Overcomer, loving, kind, gentle, anointed, amazing. I look at you, my child, and I see your potential. I love you, and I'm so proud of you. That's how Jesus feels about you today. May you go through your day knowing that your God feels that way about you. God bless you today.